Hey, good morning everybody. Matthew Charles out here, and today I'm working on the cargo trailer once again. Is it a cargo trailer? Is it a camper? It's a camper. So I reinstalled these bunk beds yesterday. They were not coated, but I coated them with polyacrylic. And you can see I have no trim on this side, but I, I installed trim right here. I'll have to coat that. Whenever I'm finishing this other side up, I'll go ahead and give that a nice coating of the polyacrylic. Yeah, I decided to go ahead and make both sides of these beds permanent. This will be a full bed across here, so that'll be nice when we're watching movies. Eventually we're gonna put a, a screen up in front, watch some movies or something while we're camping. Got my work area set up, all my tools are out. Time to build some bunk beds. So it's been quite a while since I built these, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get a length measurement. First thing I'm gonna do is grab my notebook. These are gonna be the overall lengths, and I'll be able to subtract whatever material I use. So it ended up seven, 79 and 7 eighths. I'm sure it was 80. Let's see what this top one is. I don't know why they came out. Just shy of 8. Six. Got some little bit of decisions to make if I want to change it. XL yoga mat. Extra thick, extra wide, extra long. 36 by 78. Ooh, need a little bit longer. Okay, 30 by 84, which will be perfect. I want to put a uh, yoga mat as the first thing on the, on the beds. Okay, we're going to go with something like that. So at this point, I've gotten my cut list together. I'm cross-cutting as many as the two by fours as I can. I've got the braces cut out, the bed ends cut out, and you'll see me ripping everything down to size just after this. Over the years, I've done a lot of table sawing. And if you'll notice, I still have all of my digits intact. Be very careful. Whenever you're pushing, not to push too far. Your thumb is very important. It makes us who we are. After I got all the pieces cut to size for the top bunk, I started putting together the frame. Then adding an extra third screw for a little bit more rigidity. And for the legs and braces, I did end up using the pocket hole jig. If you work alone, you can use a squeeze clamp to hold the back side of the board in place while you finish the cut. I finished cutting the plywood down to size with the table saw for a very fine edge. Right, I did that as the initial cut so that I'd have a clean edge to come back. The factory has chipped out over here and it's painted green. So I'm gonna try to remove that edge. That edge is terrible, that's what I did with the circular saw. Now I wanted to get this fully sanded before I put it together, so I wouldn't have to work around the frame. I believe my drill bit had broken off, so I was refiling a point to it. Because I didn't want to go buy another half inch sheet of plywood, I went ahead and installed this blocking so I could finish this edge with scraps.
daughter wanted to learn how to use the drill, so we let her get involved. While I have it here so handy, let's go ahead and install the trim. Make sure all your nails are seated below the wood with a nail punch. All right, so we're on day two of this bunk bed project. Yeah, I'm almost done. These, these frames are made. Now I'm going to install the final bit of trim on this section and also build the uh, rails. This is the top bunk, so we'll need some rails. It's gonna be about eight inches high. Should get this all built out this morning. It's about 11 o'clock right now. I got a late start because I went to the farmer's market, but that was good. I got jerky and coffee, two things we eat the most of. Now I'm sanding these pieces that go to the ladder. So over there where I marked, the wires came out and that's where my fuse box is and everything is, so I had to make a notch right there.
got them installed. Both bed frames are very similar to each other. I mean, they're exact. I wish the trim would have been a little bit darker. Still like the whole natural wood theme. That's was kind of the theme all throughout the trailer was natural wood. And there's a lot of it. It's basically a cabin. All the electric fits pretty comfortably in there. I did have to cut out this notch for the wires. They're not touching at all, so. And it didn't, didn't affect the structure too bad. I cut out about an inch. So with the plywood and all the bracing, I, I don't think we'll have any problem. Yeah, it's just gonna be great to be able to read. Because I still have to build a section for right here. Fishing rod holders in here, they're gonna go up top. I need to do the door seals. And eventually we're gonna get a projector. That could be any time. This is cool. This has been a long time coming. This is a year into the project. And this time last year we were probably in New Mexico or Colorado. But uh, yeah, I got a few things to do on the farm. I'm selling the walk-in cooler this week, I think. So I have to get it ready to be sold. And uh, but after that, we're gonna shoot on over to Arkansas and maybe Missouri, do a little mini vacation. And then we'll be back to work, getting this house ready to rent. So we got these Maz King mattresses and they ended up working out really great. We got the four inch, it was perfect. China. Hey, we're back. So I made these components yesterday. Uh, this is gonna be the insert that goes between the beds. And these are gonna be little tabs that go underneath this. They can spin out of the way or spin and then you can put down the bed. So I wanted these carriage bolts to be flush mount. So you see me using the paddle bit, trying to get it chiseled out, come back with the chisel to finish it. That way those carriage bolts are below the surface.
super clean at first and then I got sideways I guess when we have to pick it up. Otis, you wanna practice camera? That was the video. I hope you enjoyed it.